All right, greetings Rotorheads and would-be Rotorheads. My name is Scott. I go by Vorlin on the forums. And we are going to take a look today at flying helicopters. Now, I've taken a look at a lot of the beginners uh, videos, and there were things that drove me nuts about every single one of them. I won't go into details. Let's just do something here. Um, First of all, I want you to know that I'm flying without a script. So this is going to be very casual, but I am going to try to cover everything that you need to know, at least for the basics and some good tips for intermediate pilots. Now, advanced pilots, if you are already a CFI, if you already fly uh, actual helicopters, the only thing that might really help you with this is the setup on the computer. Um, beyond that, you know, I'm... You're not going to learn anything when I go over settling with power, when I go over retreating blade stall, ATL. You already know all this. So, anyway. And yes, we will touch on all those things. So, to start off with, one of the problems with flying helicopters in X-Plane and in any simulator is the fact that your joystick throw is so much smaller than the throw on an actual stick. Now, what do I mean by that? When you yank a real stick back and forth, you're moving about 18 inches to 2 feet. Okay, so if you pull the stick 10% to the right in order to induce some roll, it's significant. Okay, it's easy to gauge where 10% is. Your joystick, especially if you have a null zone, forget it. Um, just forget it. You, uh, you sneeze and you've just gone 15%, and you've, if your helicopter is extremely touchy, the way most of them are in X-Plane, you've already yanked yourself off course just by sneezing. This is no good. Okay, so I want to point out a few of the things here that I have done. Um, I have set all the sensitivities for the 429, which we're going to be flying the Bell 429 from Timber. And... Uh, I have set all the sensitivities for it to zero. I have also set X-Plane uh, curves and everything to zero. Now, why did I do that if I'm worried about things being twitchy? The reason I did that is because of a program called Joystick Curves. Okay, You want to look up Joystick Curves on the web and download this puppy. It is beautiful, and the reason that it's beautiful is that it can adapt to any stick. Okay, what you're looking at is the base curve that I use for pitch roll and yaw. Now, this is set to my equipment. It may not have the same curve for your equipment. That depends on what's going on with your equipment. But one of the important things that I do want you to notice, okay, with joystick curves, and hopefully this will show, Nope, it's not showing. When I right-click on this area right here, there are various options. One of them is the response modifier. Okay, with the response modifier, you have options to use multiplier or value. She comes out of the box with multiplier selected. You need to change that to value because if you look, there is response curve absolute value. Um... Okay, this is interesting. I am not seeing my cursor. <laughs> anyway, if you look on the joystick curves picture that you're seeing right there, the response curve absolute value is at the top left of the graph. If you do multiplier, what you're going to get is a multiplier of your stick, and sticks vary. Just no. Just say no. Go to absolute value. You're good. This is going to save your rear end because what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to dial it in so that on the left hand side she starts out much more smoothly so that she's not nearly as twitchy up through the middle and then as you notice there are times when you need to yank well I can yank if I need to all I have to do is lay the stick over but if I sneeze I didn't just pull myself off course so, that is joystick curves. Now, one other thing to know is that there is a website out there 
with lots and lots of training material on it. Uh, it is called Hover Control. Now, this comes into part of my qualifications to explain to you how to fly helicopters. I was with Hover Control, goodness, since 2005-ish. They are a website that specializes in, obviously, helicopters. Now, they are nowhere near as busy as they used to be. Uh, they are FS9 and FSX based. Um, the place is, as I said, it's nowhere near as busy as it used to be. But at the same time, uh, there's still a tremendous amount of material there, especially in the forums. Now, if you take a look quickly at some of the forums, okay, general discussion, flying events. Now, you get down into things that do apply to us, okay, such as general training discussion. Now, they have instructors. You actually schedule time with an instructor, and they use an add-on to be in your cockpit watching what you're doing and help you out just like an actual CFI and a couple of these guys actually are real-life CFIs or were if they're still active I don't know general training discussion you can pick up a lot of great stuff especially in the training links okay SkyMed one of the main people here has put up many training links this is number one vertical takeoff to hover turns rearward hovering, maximum performance takeoff, set down, steer approach to a steep approach to a hover, slope operations, all kinds of things. Okay. So helicopter maneuvers, again, a lot more different things. Emergency procedures. There is a tremendous amount of material here. As you can see, types of helicopters, rotor systems, approaches, departures. It can keep you busy for a long, long time. Anyhow, that is hover control. That's where I came from. Um, it took me about six months of practice before I was able to pass their certified pilot check ride. We had to hold a perfect hover. We had to fly a square of boxes by going to each corner. You had to fly them once by turning and facing the direction you were going each time. And then you had to fly them while only facing north. So you had to side slip and fly backwards. Uh, there were a few other tests involved. And uh, I finally did get my CP. And it was, a, it was an actual feeling of accomplishment. Because the bird I was flying at the time was actually very twitchy. Um, unlike this one so you're going to have an easier time of it than I did so with that said let's get into the 429 okay and we can go over a few other things real quick actually nope I lied before we get into the 429 I want to point out a couple things now I had mentioned we were going to get into a few particular things such as retreating blade stall oh that's right I need to restart her cold and dark but anyway, this is what is called the rotor disc. Okay, the easier thing to show right now with the rotor disc is going to be what's called ATL. I am trying to make sure that you can see the disc in this. There we go. Now, when you are moving forward, you have air coming from over here and it gets sucked down into the rotor disc. And that's fine. You have lots of fresh air being supplied from in front of the disc and above it. This becomes important when you're descending because when you are in ground effect or when you are descending your wash is coming off in a circular fashion especially in ground effect. When you are descending it's very much the same thing. Instead of bouncing off the ground and coming up what's happening is the air is being pushed down but your helicopter is also moving down into that air that's been pushed down here's an interesting thing what if your helicopter reaches a point where it's moving down fast enough that the roiling air gets in the way of the blades I can tell you what happens you drop like a brick it's called settling with power also known uh, technically as a vortex ring state 
Now, vortex ring state is a little bit more descriptive. There's a vortex coming off of here. It gets caught up in here, creates kind of a, I guess, a donut that's a ring, and you've got serious problems from there. Vortex ring state or settling with power typically is known to happen if you get below 3300. That is 30 knots forward airspeed, 300 feet per minute descent. If you are below 30 knots airspeed and you exceed 300 meters, or I'm sorry, 300 feet per minute descent, goodbye. Because if you don't have a bunch of altitude to recover, you're dead. Um, when it comes to this, the only way out is to slam the stick forward and nose over and get some speed up. Once you have speed, there will be air flowing, of course, over the helicopter, and you will get fresh air coming in from up here, and it will pull down into the blades, and then you'll get control restored. That is settling with power. Another interesting thing to know is LTE. Now, LTE is known as loss of tail rotor effectiveness. Okay. What can happen here is you get cones of disturbed air coming off your rotor disc as you're going forward. Now what happens if you're at just the right speed and you're turning right or left and this cone happens to pass through your tail rotor? Well, you've got problems. That's what happens. It passes through the tail rotor you lose the ability of your tail rotor to influence the tail right or left. And, uh, yeah, it gets really, really interesting. Um, LTE has been known to cause many a helicopter crash. Um, you would think that once the tail was flipped out that you would regain control. Life doesn't work out that way. Or, you know, at least you don't regain control in time to do anything about it. Um. LTE is very bad news. Just don't do it. Um, it really experience is the only thing that's going to teach you um, exactly when this disturbed air out here on the end of the rotor disc is going to be at the right angle to pass through. Um, but obviously, if you were turning right, it would come off the left disc. The harder you know, the harder you turn right, the more it comes off. The slower you're going, the greater angle. So the slower you're going. Um, the easier this is going to happen. So again, pay attention to that. Now that leaves us with one other thing called retreating blade stall. Now, let me get in here, customize, shut my engines down, apply the changes. Retreating blade stall. Eh, wrong one. Okay. Your rotors are... Whoop, okay, there we go. Here's your rotors. Okay, your rotor disc. She's going round and round this way. So going counterclockwise, what you're going to find is that the blades on the right hand side of the helicopter are going forward. The blades on the rear side of the helicopter are going backward. The blades on the front side are advancing. The blades on the rear side are retreating. What happens if your helicopter gets going fast enough? that the air flowing over the blades on the right is twice as fast as the blades are moving, but the air on the left is moving backward just as fast as the blades are moving. Answer, you have double the lift on the right and no lift on the left, and you're in a world of hurt. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, you're not going to end up in that state because you're going to end up in retreating blade stall long before that. Um, if you end up with 25% more on the right and 25% less on the left, you're already going to be fighting a nasty roll. So, excuse me, I need to cough for a moment. <coughs> excuse me. Now, what happens here is the faster you go, the more she's going to try to roll left. You may have already experienced this and not understood why. That's another reason that we have, well, something called VNA, 
velocity never exceed. Don't go past.